Welcome back. In today's video, we have the complex numbers Z1 and Z2, and we want to determine A through H. As always, most manipulations of complex number is easier to do in polar form, and some is easy to do in rectangle form. Rectangle form is easiest when we subtract or add. Polar is division and multiplication. So let's go ahead and start today's video. So we then want to find A, the product of Z1 and Z2, the product, let's just write Z1 and Z2, so that's E to the minus 60 degrees times 5 to the 45 degrees, magnitude of 5 and 45 degrees. Notice that here we multiply both magnitude, so we get a magnitude of 10. When we multiply, this can be expressed in the complex exponential, e to the j, negative 60 degrees, and e to the j, 45 degrees. Multiply two complex exponential, we add the exponents by the exponents property, the exponent property. So in this case, our angle is going to be negative 15 degrees. So that is the product of Z1 and Z2. The ratio of Z1 and Z2 is equal to 2 over 5. And the same thing. When we multiply two complex exponential, we add the exponent by the exponent property. When we divide, we subtract the exponents. So that is negative 60 minus negative 45, because in this case, Z2 is 45, which is in the denominator. So negative 60 minus 45 gives an angle of 105. And that is 105 degrees. And that's a negative, by the way. Negative 105 degrees. We can simplify that to 0 0.4 with an angle of negative 105 degrees. We then move on to C. C is the complex exponential Z1 times the conjugate of the complex exponential z2. So that's z1 times the conjugate of the complex exponential z2. Same thing. 2, in this case, 2 with an angle negative 60 is z1 times 5. However, when we change when when we use the when we take the conjugate of any complex number, we change the j the sign of the j. Here we see that z2 as a positive sign. We now change that to a negative sign. So thus we have negative 45. This is equal to multiply both of those together. We get 10. And also we get a magnitude of negative 105 degrees. D is the complex exponential, Z1 squared. So what we do, and we can, you can write this any way you want. This is equal to 2, and that's a negative 60 squared. We go ahead and we square the 2. We get 4. For this portion, we do not square the angle because it's a complex exponential. It is a co complex exponential, so thus a complex exponential to the power of 2, we times the exponent of the complex exponential, so thus we get negative 120 degrees. 
we then go on to E. E is the positive square root of E complex exponential Z2. We can write that to a power of one half. We know that the magnitude of Z2 is five and that has an angle of 45 degrees. The positive square root can be written as one half. We then use the power rule and the power rule is we take the square root of five and that gives us 2.24 and then we take 45 half of 45 because a complex exponential to the half power is going to equal the exponent divided by 2 and that gives a angle of 22.5 also remember so that's 22.5 degrees also Remember that when we use the power rule for one half, we have a plus and minus before our magnitude. So we then go ahead and do the, we're going to do F and F is basically the positive square root of the complex exponential Z2 conjugate. This is equal to so we're still dealing with the power. So the magnitude is five. If we take the conjugate of the complex exponential Z2, the conjugate changes BJ and BJ changes theta to negative 45. Thus we have negative 45. Notice what happens in this case. We see that here, we have the same thing, only thing is change is the sine at the angle. So all we have to do is rewrite the same expression with just the angle change to a minus. So thus we have plus or minus 2.24 for magnitude with an angle of negative 22.5 degrees. G is the expression z1 times the difference of z2 and z1 conjugate. This is equal to, we can write z1, so that's 2 with an angle of negative 60 degrees. Remember that whenever we're taking the in our case, uh, what would I call it? Whenever we're multiplying, we do, whenever you're multiplying, we do that in, uh, in polar form. Whenever we're multiplying and dividing, we do that in polar form. And whenever we're doing subtraction or addition, we do that in rectangle form. So thus, if we convert to rectangle form and then do the subtraction, we end up with a magnitude of 2.54. Well, a real part of 2.54 and an imaginary part of plus J 5.27 conjugate. So we do our subtraction in rectangle form. We keep our two with an, mm, with an angle of negative 60 degrees. We then take the conjugate, so the sign changes. Then convert that, so we then now convert our expression into, in parentheses, to polar. If we convert that to polar, we then end up with the following magnitude of 5.85 and an angle of negative 64.27. We times the magnitude together, we get 11.7.
and by exponential root property we add those two pro add those two angles together so we get negative 124.27 degrees we then move to h h is the complex number z2 conjugate all over z1 plus z2 because we're doing division and addition we want to keep the top which in this case will be z2 conjugate so you change the sign to a negative the angle of the sine of the angle to a negative so we then have 5 with an angle of negative 45 degrees then we keep in this case we convert the what would I say we convert our complex numbers into rectangle and then subtract and after we subtract we then convert back to polar form and divide so if we convert and add I said subtract a while ago I should have said add if we convert and add we end up with a real part of 4.54 with a imaginary point part of 1.80 we then convert we then convert that to polar form so we then have 4.89 with an angle of 21.63 degrees. Now we can divide. We divide that out. We have 1.02 and then we get an angle. So negative 45 minus 21.63. We then get negative 66.63 degrees. And that's it for H. So that's it for today's video and as always when dealing with complex numbers it's easier to divide and multiply in polar form and it's easier to add or subtract in rectangle form this also should be said that when calculating or when dealing with circuits that's what we're building towards it's 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 easy to do this without doing a circuit problem but when dealing with a circuit problem we want to have this down so we don't have to struggle with the complex um, part of the math and as always a calculator will come in handy to do all of this lifting for you so i think i'll post a video on a calculator probably a ti 89 and probably a ti 36 that's kind of like common calculators in like engineering so I'll do that for the next video or probably wait a little bit down the line. But that's it for today's video. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.